Hello everybody in the software engineering class and welcome back to another video. In this video, I call it my calculator video. Um, I am going to demonstrate a calculator that uses JSP and then a calculator that does uh, that uses a servlet. Uh, so one calculator will be a JSP calculator. The other calculator will be a uh, servlet. So if you navigate yourself over to the class uh, website, uh, you go into the 401 folder, you go into examples, and you go into JSP. We've got two sets here. I got calculator servlet. We'll do second with, that goes along with a calculator.java. And then we have, there we go, calculator.html interface with a calculator.jsp. Now I put txt extensions on the end so that you can click on them and your browser is going to open them up like a text file. Of course, when we use these files and you download these files, you want to rename them, get rid of the txt extensions. I've put txt ex extensions on everything. Oh, we'll also look at simple form, I think, as well. Uh, but I put txt extensions on everything to make it easier for cutting and pasting, um, especially if you want to follow along with these examples, and I believe you're probably going to want to. Um, so. Go ahead and open up Eclipse if it's not open already. And let's do the JSP calculator first. Uh, so I'm going to select a new project. So I'm gonna go File, New. And uh, all the time, the only one I'm really gonna select ever is the Dynamic Web Project. So both Servlets and JSP both use the Dynamic Web Project template. So that's the one I'm gonna pick. And this one's gonna be a JSP calc. Uh, here I'll do here, calc JSP. Uh, there we go. And uh, Tomcat is my server. And uh, go ahead and click next, and then next. And you want to hit this little thing here that says generate web XML deployment descriptor. I wish there was a way, there probably is a way of turning that on by default. Uh, but we'll just leave this alone and uh, go ahead and press finish. I'm in the habit of just selecting the web XML descri deployment descriptor anyway, whether or not I'm going to use a servlet or not. Just in case I decide to add a servlet to the to the uh, project, we need it when we start looking at servlets. We don't necessarily need it for JSP, uh, but it's a good practice to always remember to click that little button. That little button, when you click it, creates in the web folder. It creates the uh, web XML file. This is the deployment descriptor, by the way. And it is just uh, giving the, the app a name, a version number. It's kind of like the Android manifest, if you're familiar with Android. If not, don't worry about it. It's just kind of like the control file that sets the properties and the build information uh, for the project. And you need that in order to run the project if you have a servlet. So, all right, so for JSP, if you remember, we're gonna put all of our content for JSP, we're gonna put it in the web content folder. So I'm gonna to go to File, New, and I'm gonna go down to Other. And uh, actually, let me show you something real quick here. Let me show you something kind of nifty here. Uh, we're gonna do this one here. This is the calculator HTML and the calculator .zip. So I'm gonna go do this. I'm gonna copy, and I'm just gonna make a local file using a text wrangler paste and this is an HTML file and in this basic HTML file uh, we're gonna load up the interface for a basic uh, basic uh, well, you'll see it momentarily it's just got a form in here the forms gonna run calculator.jsp so we can call this file anything we want so I'm gonna save it as I put it on my desktop I'm gonna save it as interface so you can sort of see what this looks like and so this is interface.html, take out the txt extension. Don't, you don't use that txt extension. And then uh, for the one that goes with it, for this one here, this is calculator.jsp. Uh, Actually, this is calculator.jsp.txt. Click on this guy here, we'll do the same thing. This is the JSP one. This one we wanna call calculator. Uh, because that's what we call it, and I think I might actually have it on my desktop already. I do, oh, actually I don't, I have a JSP version of it, I have a TXT version. So go ahead into Text Wrangler, paste that guy in there, 
And uh, what do we got in here? This one's going to be uh, called calculator. We're going to call it calculator.jsp. So file save as calculator. And then we want JSP. So this one is a JSP file called calculator.jsp. All right, so let's go ahead now. And uh, I'm gonna sh this is what I wanted to show you. So if you're in Eclipse, and you got these two files downloaded, here they are right here, actually. I've got interface, and I've got calculator.jsp. If I make this a little bit smaller so you can sort of see what I'm doing here, I can take these two guys and drag them into, see what it says when you dragged them in, I see this little plus next to it. Um, so let me, let me make this a little bit, I'm gonna go that way with it. Uh, there we go, so you can sort of see what I'm doing here. I drag it in, I, it highlights the web content folder. I got the little plus there and I let go. And in, I'm gonna copy it in. If you link it in, it'll pull it from the desktop and won't put it in the project folders. I want to copy it into the project folders because when I remove this crap off of my desktop, eventually I'm going to throw away my half my project uh, if I don't copy it in. Uh, so I'm just going to say OK. You see now I have interface in there and then I'm going to take calculator and drag that one in there too. Copy that in there. And now the calculator. So I'm going to run this so you see what it looks like first. And what I'm going to run first is the interface.html file. So I'm just gonna right mouse click, do a run as, run on the server. And uh, this is the guy here, Tomcat8. Just click on finish. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and restart it. Let me start the server. Just get a fresh build here. Give it a few minutes here. Here we go. So this is the interface.html file. It's putting up a form where we have a basic calculator where we could put a number in here and a number in here and we can select an option like plus and if we hit submit we get the addition is 67. So this called the calculator.jsp file and gave it the number 1 which was 23 and the number two, which was 44, and it asked for an add. So R1 was equal to add, and it took it from a form. And so you can see that this is the HTML element. So let's go take a look at the HTML element. So the HTML code is uh, just HTML code. It's just all plain old HTML code. If you go to W3 schools, you can learn about HTML. For the purposes of this class, you don't really need to know much, and you can probably cut and paste this code here and use it whenever you need a form, because this is a pretty good form. Uh, the form action calls calculator.jsp, and it's using a get. You've got two options, a post or a get. A get actually puts the information up here on the command line, and we just saw it a few minutes ago. It's not very secure, but it runs pretty fast, and we're just testing it. So the get's not using any security at all. It's just going to send it up on that command line. Um, so we have a label, and uh, we're going to call it uh, number one. And uh, that's what we're calling it in the code. And it says number one, uh, number one on the screen. Uh, and then we have another number two. And then we have some text that says uh, number one, number two next to it. If you imagine what the form looks like, here's the form. Here's number one, here's number two. Here's the input fields for number one and number two. And then we have some radio buttons down at the bottom. Radio buttons have add, subtract, multiply, and divide on them. Add, subtract, multiply, divide. And then we have a submit button. And the submit button is used. And the action for the submit button calls the calculator.jsp. So our interface is calling our controller slash model if we're following model view controller, this is the interface. This is the this is the view. Uh, what we're looking at is the interface. The con the calculator itself is a JSP file. So this is the part we're learning in the class. And this one I made uh, purposely to have the whole thing, the whole thing in an opening and closing Java tag. So what do we got here? We just have a title that's going to show up at the top. And that's about it. We can take this out. We don't even need this up here, actually. And we're using an at directive, and it's going to be 
for page that the language is going to be equal to Java, not that we could use anything else. In fact, it would work if we took this out as well. But we do, we do need this, and we do need to put a .jsp extension on the file. And so we have an opening, and we have a closing JSP tag. And inside, this is core Java. This is what you've been writing all semester. Uh, and so we have integer one and integer number two, number one, number two, which is a parse, integer.parse int. This is the different part to the request. So the post, the, the get has a post and request, and the, the request gets number one and number two. Let me show you off of the command line. So if I were to run this guy, let me just run it one more time. I think I closed the window. Uh, let's see, run it on a server. Uh, yeah, let's save everything, I guess. Okay, so if I put like, I'll put 20 on the top and I'll put 40 on the bottom. So you can sort of see that. And this time I'll do multiplication, submit. So this is where we're getting the number one is equal to 20. So now uh, multipl multiplication, it's 800. So it, it performed the activity for us. Number two is equal, this is what it means when, with a get. So if I use a get to send the data from the form to the servlet, it goes on the parameter line. Um, so this is the URL line. So the radio button had MUL on it. Number two is equal to 40. Number one was equal to 20. So if I go back into my calculator code, this is the number one and this is the number two that's being passed to calculator.jsp and it's just happening automatically. So we're getting it from, and this is an HTTP protocol. You'll learn more about this in the web class, but this is a protocol that's given to you automatically that exists. And these are methods for an object, a request object that you already have access to regardless. You don't have to do anything with it. You just get it. So the get to parameter one, get to parameter two, copy it to some integers. So we have the number one and we have the number two in our local code here. And now we're going to do a string. I was going to call the string. We're going to get the R1 parameter, just like we got the other ones. So if R1 is add, subtract, multiply, divide, then we're just going to take the numbers. And, and then we have an out.print line. Addition is out.print line. So this is where we're getting the out dot print line this one says multiplication is equal it is colon 800 well that's this line here multiplication is colon plus the multiply number and the number is this one times this one this is just core java and this is what you've been writing all semester um, so we take the java where you're sticking inside of opening and closing jsp tags and voila we have a jsp file that runs and that returns a result and it's running from a call of action from a form so it's a form control that's doing it for us all right i'm going to close this one out actually let's just let's just do this here yeah, just close it completely uh close the project well, let's take a look at the other one that's out there that is, uh, there's a form out here, simple form here. Let's take the simple form and we have an HTML code for the simple form. And this one has a simple form. Mm, okay. And I just want to show you one more. This is just one more JSP example doing the same thing we just saw a few minutes ago. So I'm going to go file new web dynamic web project this one's going to be called simple form and i'm going to go next to next and click that little deployment descriptor i'm going to press ok so i got simple form i guess i could have capitalized the f but that's okay so let's see simple form is uh, going to load momentarily as soon as I pause the video, it just loads instantly, but up oh, there it goes. All right. And this one will just, um, I'll make the files this one a little bit differently oh, instead of dragging them in. Uh, let's see, simple form is going to have a uh, HTML file. Let's do the HTML file first. Uh, so we already had it there, didn't I? Copy it. The HTML file doesn't really matter what you call it. So file new. 
And if I wanted to add an HTML file to the program, I just go other, and then I select HTML file. And this is from the web folder. So it doesn't normally show up as easy as that. You normally you get this looking interface here and you have to go all the way down to the bottom of the window, open up web, and then you see all the web components. So we want HTML file. So next, uh, I'm gonna call this one uh, simple form. It doesn't really matter what you call it. Click on finish. And we get our simple form. I'm just gonna take everything out of there and paste in my simple form. Oh, there we go. So there's my simple form. So it says, please tell me about yourself. And it's gonna call simple form handler.jsp. And the method again is gonna be get. So this is the same thing we just looked at a few minutes ago. It has names, a sex, and the primitive, the Java primitive type that best describes your personality. And then we're gonna have a optional um, selection so you can drop down box and select which one you want. This is just showing you some more form controls. For those of you who do not know anything about HTML, you can cut and paste this stuff and reuse it. Um, it'll allow you to do a little drop down. We'll see momentarily. So then we're going to take the simple form handler.jsp file and copy it. And we will do it the manual way. File new other. And this time go ahead and select JSP file. Next. And oh, we'll just call this simple form handler. Whatever you call it, it is case sensitive. And uh, it is, we need to change. If you change it, this name to something else, we need to change it in the HTML code. So I think I called it simple form handler. I did, okay, good. So hopefully we'll, we'll be able to run it. Just take out what's in there and paste in the simple form handler from the, the file out there. So what is this guy doing? Very similar to the calculator that we just did a few minutes ago. It's gonna, it's not doing anything. This is missing all of the headers and it's showing you the minimalist kind of approach to it. Also showing you how to put a comment in actually. This is a comment with the two, uh, you haven't seen this tag yet probably. Uh, this is a comment, um, maybe you should say prints out the variables. <laughs> but anyway, um, and this one's showing you the, the variables themselves. So here it grabs the variables from the form so this one is request, I, you know, get parameters. It's the same thing we saw a few minutes ago. It's going to get all the parameters from the form. Now, instead of using an out.print line to print it to the screen, this one's going to use a different tag set. So it's going to say hello, comma, and then this equal sign says print the first name and then print the last name. And then I see that you are a, and then it's going to print out the gender that you put in there. And you know, you remind me of a Java type variable I once knew because uh, it's going to pull out the Java type variable as well. So you see it's using an equal sign. That's the tag that is used. Oops, I didn't want to do that. That's the tag that's used to print the variable to the screen. So it's using a slightly different approach to print it. It's not using out.print uh, print line or print. It's just using the, the JSP tag to print it, which is perfectly fine. Um, either way is good. So let's just run it. Um, it's not gonna do anything too, too new, uh, but you'll be able to see. Let's just save all these changes. You'll be able to see this work. Go ahead and restart the server. I guess I could click on that little button so it doesn't remind me, but then I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to remember to tell you to always restart it. If you always restart it, that means you've got a, oops, what do we got here? What did I do wrong? Insert title here. Let's just, I don't even know which one that was. Let's just save this, save. Okay, let's try this again. I should have put, uh, and I will do it in the future here. That one's saved, okay, good. I should put an auto save on it. Um, okay, let's do it again. I did not save the changes on the form. Running it on this server, press finish. There we go. So tell me about yourself. Uh, first name is Barbara. If you don't save it, it doesn't, it's not gonna, not gonna run right. I am 
female, what Java primitive type best describes your personality? So this is the box I was try trying to show you. So we've got some input fields, we've got some radio buttons, and now this is an options box. Um, do I feel like that float a byte along an int, a boolean? I sort of feel like a boolean, I guess. A yes or a no. Okay, and you hit the submit. And then it says, hello, Barbara Hecker. I see that you are female. And you know, you remind me of a Boolean variable I once knew. And so there is the servlet who is handling the input and it is printing it to the screen. And we have, if you look at this line up here, I don't know if I can scroll it over. I can scroll it over a little bit, there we go. You see all of the data is clearly visible on the URL line uh, and that this runs simple form handler.jsp and all the data is passed through it. And that is because we were running with a get method. So you'll learn about that in the web class when you take that. Um, it's okay to use it for here because it's on the server to the server. Now, if we were passing this, if we weren't running this on the server, we were running this from an internet web browser that was calling to the server and we weren't passing it server to server, then we would uh, probably want to use something else, probably want to use post on that um, or do something to encrypt it. Otherwise, that data, if you're on a plain HTTP protocol, not an HTTPS, that data would be in clear text and anyone with a... Anyone with a, a reader that could take and uh, scan the scan the packets, like using Wireshark or something. Wireshark's the utility that scans packets on the network. They'd be able to pick up those packets, so they would know my name, and uh, they would know that I I feel like a Boolean. So, all right. So that is the simple form. So as promised, I'm going to show you the servlet next. And so let me get rid of this one here. Actually, I'm gonna get rid of this guy here so I don't get confused. And I'm gonna delete the project content. You, you can leave yours. I'm just deleting mine to make it all clean. In fact, I'm not even gonna delete this one too. Yeah, there we go. I don't know where this example is. Don't ever delete servers, but you could delete everything else. Uh, these examples, I think, were the ones I showed you the, the first video. Um, and let me just close that one though. I don't know if I need that one or not. Uh, let's see, close the project. All right, so let's create a new one. So this one's gonna be the calculator server, the servlet. So new, it's all the same, dynamic web project. New dynamic web project. And in the new dynamic web project, I'm gonna call this one calc. Uh, let's go, hey, let's go calc servlet if I could type calc servlet and then go ahead and click next and then click next again and generate the web deployment descriptor and click on finish give it a few minutes to load up and this one here will add the servlet file because this one's pretty easy and we'll add the HTML file it's the same as before, but the servlet file is going to go into a different directory. So let me show you how to add a servlet now. Well, let's, let's start with the HTML. So we go to, we're familiar with this already. We go to the web, web content. Leave all this stuff alone. Just don't worry about anything that's in there. Uh, let's see. And uh, this is the one we want. So we want the calc servlet html.txt. So this is an HTML file. Actually, it kind of looked like the last one we just did. Uh, so I'm going to go file other. Let's put in an HTML file. And let's just call this one, uh, I don't know, interface. It doesn't really matter what we call the HTML file. Uh, interface, there we go. So in the interface file, oops take out what's there, paste in the contents of this guy here. This guy is the calc servlet.html file. And what do we got? Actually, we can run it. It's just not going to work yet. Uh, we're using a get method again. 
we have a form and the form action now we don't put a JSP next to it we just put the word calculator because when calculator.java gets compiled into calculator.class just like command line running of Java we don't use the file extension we just use the name of the file the object's going to be called calculator so this form is actually going to call calculator and what is this going to do we're going to have two input fields and we're going to have operators you know what I would almost say I think it's the same interface we just looked at a few minutes ago uh, but let's just run it so you can sort of see what it looks like it's the first calculator interface it's bound to be I don't think I saved it though I might get a blank screen I do I got a blank screen you know why because I didn't save it <laughs> I'm gonna need to turn on the auto save because I constantly do that now I run it, it's going to work. Maybe I'm helping you for the next time you do this. This is the same thing we had a few minutes ago. You know where we put in like the numbers? But this one's not going to work yet. This one's going to come back with an error message. It's going to come back with an HTTP status for it or not found. Why? Because the calculator is not found because we didn't put it in the project yet. So let's cancel out of that for a second there. Let's create a servlet. So servlets are .java files. And so here's a .java file called calculator.java.txt. This is 100% Java code. There's no HTML anything in this. This is a .java file. So I'm going to copy this here. Copy. And let's add a .java file to the project. It's going to go into the Java resources and it's going to go into the source, the SRC folder, source code folder. So I'm going to go File, New. This time I'm going to select Servlet right here. We want to put in a new Servlet. If we put a new Servlet in, um, forget about the package. If you leave the Java package blank, the default will come in. Uh, this one is going to be called Calculator calculator because we want calculator.java so put in calculator for the class name we don't really need any of this other stuff just go ahead and press on finish so in the uh, in the default package you'll see calculator and calculator is up here so what makes a server a servlet a servlet is uh, that it's coming now and it's being in, extending from HTTP servlet. I will have another video uh, on uh, Tuesday uh, that will go over some concepts about servlets. For right now, I wanted to demonstrate the difference to you between the two. So we have a servlet implementation. This is for the class. Um, and so we're, we're going to uh, extend servlet. We're going to have servlet extension http request and response there's some required when you extend this you're inheriting by the way if you remember it um, so we're going to have a constructor that's going to do a uh, call super the constructor really isn't doing anything and we have a do get and a do post the do get is going to happen when we do a get from the form the do post is going to happen when we do a post from the form so for example if i run the servlet sample code that's in here right now I have a response dot get writer dot append served at and then it's going to append the request with the get con get context path so it's like okay um, it's going to it's going to write to the screen served at um, so let's just run it we'll see what happens so if I click on this here and I do a run as and I do a run on server and I click on finish I get a message well that's because I didn't add it to the deployment descriptor ah. well the deployment descriptor actually added it up here so up here um, I've got the servlet registered as calculator. I'm calling it calculator. If I run it from here, it will run. If I run it from here, it will not run because I did not put it in here, the web. So let's run, uh, let's, let's, let's change this before we run it. Uh, but this particular, this should have run though. Let's see, let's just run real quick here. 
This should not have produced an error. Mm hmm. Calc servlet calculator. Uh, the origin server did not find the current representation of the target source or it is not willing to disclose that one exists. Well, okay, we didn't, yeah. You can't call the servlet on its own without calling it from, uh, okay, I, I didn't add it to the, to the web interface. I'm going to talk about more about this later, but uh, let's go ahead and copy the code in and see what happens uh, when we run it from the HTML code. HTML code should run it just fine. Either that or I didn't create the default. I did create the default deployment descriptor. Uh, but it's not right. The deployment descriptor doesn't know about it, so it's not going to run on its own by running it. Uh, ooh, I could do it this way. Let's just test it real quick before I say that. Um, actually, I've already... I'll do this one more time with the other one. Here, actually, wait a minute. I know, don't you like this on the fly? On the fly, uh, don't, do, don't do what I'm doing. Uh, keep what you're doing. I'm just gonna test something real quick here. I'm just, I, I reverted back the changes. So, no, no, okay, still not gonna do it. Okay, so let me put the code back in here for calculator. This will work, I guarantee it. Uh, let's see. Paste. There we go. All right, so this is the calculator code. And the calculator code in the servlet is actually registering itself. So this is doing, uh, this is registering the servlet as calculator and is being called as calculator, which was needed to put into the other code that we had in there as a default in order for it to work if we're not going to edit the web descriptor, the web. Uh, interface, the web.xml deployment descriptor. Okay. In the next video, when I talk about servlets, I'll talk about the actual Java code. Uh, but you see, this is very similar to the JSP. We're going to use the get. We're going to pass to it number one and number two uh, for text one, number, text one, text two. The calculator is going to extend HTTP servlet. We have two methods that we need to implement to do get and the do post in here we have the do get that we're using we're not using the do go, do, the do post instead if a do post is called it's going to run the do get and the do get is what's going to run when we run get from here so from our interface class this is going to call calculator and it's running the get and so this is the do get which means if we get a get then process the get. Now the get is going to use a print writer out um, that is going to take a string n1, string n2, and an operator. And then um, if the operator is equal to add, then it's going to print out that. If it's uh, equal to subtract, then it's going to print out the integer. Well, it's going to take and subtract them. And so what it's doing is taking the two numbers that are coming in, parsing them as ints and either doing an addition or subtraction or multiplication or division on it, depending upon the operator that is selected. And it's printing it to the screen. The code is practically identical to the JSP code, but it's now being housed in a .java file. So let's cross our fingers here. Let's save it. Let's just save everything. Oops, that one's being saved. Okay, if I can close it, it means it was saved. All right. Uh, let's run this one. Let me cross my fingers here and make sure it works. Otherwise, I got to troubleshoot this, and I'll just pause the video for that if that's the case. I do want to restart the server. I did not restart the server before, and that may have been the problem. Um, so the J JSP doesn't necessarily need a, a server restart, but servlets do because you need to load up. You need to compile the serv servlet, load it up into the server memory. Uh, so that it can be served up to incoming requests. And so it can't be found unless it's in the memory and an instance of the object has been created. And so we need, we need to restart that server. And I don't think I was restarting it before either, which may have also been another problem. But uh, let's just do a proof of concept here and see if it works. So I'm going to put in the number 20, 
and uh, we'll put in 10 over here and let's do subtraction there we go we're gonna hit the submit button and now we have 10. so the number 10 showed up so we now we know it's working so if i go back and i do uh, let's put in here 60 and we'll do add addition and you know that may have been the re now i got 80. The reason why it wasn't working before is because I wasn't resetting the server. I don't know why the little pop-up didn't show up. So I might have to change around my settings a little bit so I can restart the server, uh, require a restart on each time. There's a property I can set in the, in the um, actual uh, pa uh, project that will automatically restart the server each time. Um, so that's probably not a bad thing to do. So I don't like the 80 being put to the screen here. Or do I like the 80? I don't know. You can see what gets printed. You see it here. This one we're using a print writer out. And uh, the print writer is printing out this here. So I'm going to just make a change here and just show you something. Uh, so I'm going to go out.printline. Hello, I'm addition. There you go. And I'm going to show you what happens when you don't restart the server. <laughs> Actually, uh, maybe I've already demonstrated that. So I'm saving it, right? I'm going to save it. And uh, I'm not going to recompile it now. Now I'm just going to rerun it. So I'm going to go back to this HTML. I'm going to close these guys down, so make sure nothing is open. Now I added it to the uh, to the add, so I'm gonna do run on server. And this time I am gonna click continue without restarting. And so we're gonna see that the if I select the add, so I got add selected. Oh, it did print it. Oh well, hello, I'm addition. Well, all right. I, I was hoping it wasn't going to print Hello, I'm Edition up there, because uh, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but uh, Eclipse wants to be funny with me today. So, I don't know. I was trying to show you an error. Actually, I was trying to show you just 377 being printed to the screen. Uh, but uh, it got refreshed. So, well, let's load it again, actually. Let's stop it here. Close it down. Just load it up one more time. You do have to reload it. Um, well, restart the server. I thought I had to. Oh, well. So it should still, well, it's going to still be there. Yep. Okay, good. All right. Um. Well, well maybe it's a good thing I didn't fail. Um, so you, you do have to restart the server, servlet at one point, it looks to be a bit finicky. It um, actually refreshed without me restarting it, which was interesting. Sometimes it doesn't always do that. Sometimes you get the old version of it. So if you've been making changes, and the point I was trying to make is if you're making changes to your code and you're saving it and you're recompiling it and you're running it and you want this change to take effect, it's a good idea to restart the server just to be on the safe side. It appeared to take and apply the change regardless of restarting the server, but it doesn't always do that. Um, I have had cases where it didn't. The other thing too is in the web XML file, if you look at the source of the file, you see there's a list in here that lists the calc server and it has an index and an index and an index and a default and a default, but it doesn't show our calculator.java file. So it's not gonna allow it. It's, it's, it's not going to run unless it's in here. If you're building it from the deployment descriptor and relying upon this. So instead what we did in the calculator, and you can do the same approach as well. We put the stuff that is supposed to be, not supposed to be, but is usually found in the web uh, descriptor. We put it right here. So this is the, the web descriptor. It's giving permission for calculator to run as calculator for the URL pattern. And it's allowing the parameters, the text one, text two, text one, text, the, the names to come through for text one and text two. Um, so that code is, is making it work.
as well. So it's not a bad idea to put that in there. So you could follow the same pattern. Um, I will show you some more examples in upcoming videos. I have not given you the theory, the, the textbook or PowerPoint slides on the, the .java code yet for the servlets. That'll come next week. Uh, but I wanted to demonstrate the difference in this video's purposes to show you the difference between a servlet and JSP. So JSP is in the web content folder. It's not compiled. It is HTML code with Java code inserted inside of it. The servlet is a .java file, and this is Java code with some optional text code inside of it. So it's inside out. So you've got Java code on the outside and it's printing out HTML or text code in the inside versus a web page that is HTML and CSS and text code that has Java embedded inside of that. So it's kind of like an inside out, a servlet is an inside out JSP file, if that makes any sense. Okay, I will leave you with that on this video and start the next one with more examples. So I hope you've enjoyed the calculators um, and now hopefully you know the difference between JSP and servlets. Talk to you again in another video.